Okay guys, so I'm on the way home and uh, I'm getting ready to uh, go home and pack up and uh, take off again. And I'm on my way to pick up a motorcycle from somebody who's renting their bike on um, Ridershare. That's Ridershare, riders-share.com. So um, I, uh, I was gonna get a Rocket 3 and um, it didn't work out because the guy's too far away. So I decided to go ahead, go ahead and do a KTM Duke 890R, which is probably the closest thing to um, the Triumph Street Triple RS uh, that's out there right now. So um, I'm headed home. We're gonna we're gonna go get it. I got it for a couple days. We're gonna see how that goes. I've never rented a bike before from anybody, from from whether a business or an individual. So I'm I'm real. Um, I'm real excited to see how that goes, and uh, if you stay tuned, we will find out here in a minute. Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're back into the uh, we're back into the uh, evolving mail garage, and um, I've got it a little cleaned up here for the purposes of this video so i just picked up i just picked up the duke 890 and i just drove it back about 20 20 25 minutes so i don't know 20 miles something like that um first impressions it's especially coming off of the triumph street triple um 765 rs 2020 this is a 21 uh duke 890 so um first impression is Without really knowing any of the specs, I know I know horsepower. I know it's just about the same, and I know it's got a little bit more torque than than the triple. Um, that stuff I know, but other than that, I don't really know much. I don't know the weights. I don't really know what it is. So first impression, it feels super light. It feels way lighter than the Triumph, which is impressive because the Triumphs, uh, I think, three sixty five. I'll have all those specs. I'll go over those. But three something, four four ten, four fifteen, somewhere in there. Uh, wet weight, so it feels like it's every bit of 50 to 75 pounds lighter. It feels, it literally feels like I'm riding a dirt bike, good and bad. Um, it, it's when I first got on it, the very first turn I made, I thought I was going to dump it. Not really, I didn't really think I was going to dump it, but I, I oversteered, like I over leaned, I over, I overdid it a little bit because I'm used to the weight of my bike. So, and my bike hand, you know, the, the Triumph handles fantastically it's it's superb handling um but you know you kind of you kind of dive into a to a turn and i went to do that on this and I almost like dove like pfft, dove so it was different um it didn't have any more problems after that because i knew you know i got used to the the weight of the bike pretty quickly but um i did uh it was a little it was a little odd at first i have to say it, it kind of surprised me that that it was so it felt so light it literally feels like driving a dirt bike it has the sound of a dirt bike it sounds like a four-stroke dirt bike uh it has a sound of a dirt bike it, it has the um initial initially right because i've never driven this bike before so initially it feels like i'm like like i'm taking off it has the acceleration of a dirt bike there's a like i feel like when i switch gears it's like just a a momentary i don't want to say lag but a momentary like flat, but I'm talking momentary like quarter of a second flat, and then boom, pull like warp speed, Scotty like takes off like it's crazy, it's crazy. So I'm gonna do some more. I'm gonna ride it to work tomorrow. I'm gonna take it ride it home. Um, unfortunately for me, both of those trips are gonna be in the dark, so I'm not gonna get the ride to sing in the daylight till Friday. I have to bring it back Friday night about six o'clock. So I'm gonna spend all day Friday riding it, um, getting off periodically and, and talking about my experience, and then. Somewhere in there, probably near the end, I'll sum it up. We'll give the specs on the bike um, and exactly how that how that compares to the to the street triple. They are very much in the same class of bike. They're they're very equally equally yoked. They're the same kind of bike. Um, I will say that the Triumph feels totally different sitting on that. That one feels like it might be a little bit higher seat, but looking at it, it doesn't look like that. But it feels like it. Um, and it feels really light and it feels 
different. It's just different. So we're gonna get a good, let's get a good look at it now. We'll go over it some more. Um, let's, let me turn you around here. You can see a lot of orange. I mean, it even looks like a dirt bike, right? It's got the orange and white. It looks like a, it looks kind of like a dirt bike. Um, it, it, it's light. It's, there's a lot of plastic, a lot of plastic. This is all plastic, plastic. Um, tank is, I think that's aluminum or something, but plastic, you know, plastic covered. It is a naked, a naked sport bike. Um, it's probably a little less naked than mine, but it has sort of the same, you know, mine looks like a praying mantis and this one looks like a wasp. Um, and it, it's, you know, has Brembo brakes. The brakes are excellent, just like mine. They're, they're just fantastic. Um, I was, I was actually pretty impressed with the brakes. It almost felt like I had a little bit more brake. I don't know what that was about. Probably because the bike, I think, is lighter. There are some other things that are different. Um, and I'll, again, we'll go over it. Um, but I, I just wanted to get a good look at this bike. Um, so you guys can see, this is the Duke 890 by KTM. Okay. So stay tuned and we'll go over it some more. I can't wait. I can't wait to do this review. This is awesome. My 50th birthday is in a couple of days. So this is like a birthday present to myself. Besides those Jimmy Buffett tickets that I'm that I got. But this is like a birthday present to myself because I really want to do this review. But I get to I get to drop a bike. So it's pretty cool. Stay tuned. Okay, guys. I just wanted to say that um I just got to work today. I'm wearing this. Uh, I'm wearing it. Can't talk. All right, guys, I just got to work today. I'm wearing this rain suit because it's been, it's fog. The fog's been horrendous today, uh, this week. Um, it's actually not bad today, but I had it on because it gets soaking wet. But anyway, I just want to say that I, um, I put the bike in um, sport mode today. I put it in sport mode and wow, what a difference. That little flat spot that I was talking about on the rev range, the, when you're shifting, a little, I said a little, little bit of flat and then bam, this all that flat's gone it's all bam it's even more bam it's an it's an incredible motorcycle it takes off fantastic it's super light i can i can maneuver around like nothing and i've had a really easy time getting used to a new bike so stay tuned we're going to find out some things i like about this motorcycle is I, I love the torquiness it's super torquey um the brakes are great brakes are great i love the tft display it looks fantastic i can i can actually see what i'm looking for versus my triumph with the uh, tft on the rs it's it's pretty but you can't find anything can't find the clock to save your life um, this i can find the clock it's right there um, i can find the odometer which i can't find on the on the triumph very easily um, i i like the mirrors are very nice looking they're good looking mirrors um, they are hard to adjust though. I can't for life of me. This thing just does not want to move man And there's not a lot of there's no adjustment There's no adjustment on this that I can see I, I haven't been able to I was afraid to every time I realize that it's not where I want it I'm driving so it's kind of hard um, To you know to just uh, I don't like um, I'm not a huge fan of the um, turn signal when you put the turn signal on, it doesn't cancel automatically. And I am spoiled now for my for my street triple because it cancels automatically. My my Triumph um, Scrambler did not do that. Um, my Honda didn't do that. My my um, Kawasaki Mean Street didn't do that. My Yamaha didn't do that. Um, but this this one does. And I think only them and Harley and probably BMW, I would guess, do it, at least standard, um, which is nice. Um, I, I, uh, I'll tell you one thing that was weird for me for this bike is that this bike, this bike um, it starts up uh, with a kickstand down if it's in neutral and no um, clutch. So like I didn't, I touched it and it started up and it, it almost shocked me. You're so almost kind of scared me or surprised me, I guess is better, a better term. I wasn't scared, but I was surprised. Um, Cause for a moment I thought I was gonna lurch forward or something, but the bike starts up without pulling the clutch in, which I, which I guess is handy, but I'm just not used to it. I've never had a bike do that, um, that I remember anyway. So, so that was different. 
um, and I guess as long as the uh, neutral safety switch is correct and working, then it's not a problem. That's a nice little setup there. Um, yeah, so um, let's see, what else? Um, I, I'm not a big fan of the, um, sorry, I'm trying to get this microphone right. I'm not a big fan of the, um, the pegs, the foot pegs. They, they, they don't, they're not sticking out far enough for me. Like, to me, they're, they're like three quarters of the way of what they should be sticking out. And it's odd because this one has rubber on it and this one does not. And on most bikes, the brake pedal has rubber, and this the shifter either does or doesn't. But they both sort of are only stick out so very far. So what I have to do, I find myself having to like pigeon toe, pigeon toe my foot in, like push it in, which is weird. I don't know why it's like that. Is it just me? I can't put my boot in really enough. All I do is barely catch it then. But even then, I still have to sort of pigeon toe it. I don't know. It's just different ergonomically it's a little strange for me coming from my bike is it bad no is it great no it's okay um it's okay i mean it's, maybe it's just me being picky being a picky little bitch but you know that's what i'm here to do this is my this is what i'm doing today i'm picking on this bike seeing if i can pick it apart and one thing i'll never pick apart is the mount torque Uh, the good thing is the speedometer is covered and you can't see how fast I went. But, um, and I don't have any clue how fast I went, but I made it to sixth gear. Um, and I probably could have kept going just in fifth, but it is a nice six speed. Wet clutch. Um, oh, I meant to turn there. Uh, but it, it is, um, very nimble, very nimble motorcycle. I, I think the handlebars are not as wide as mine, I think. It's hard to tell because my, my, my mirrors are bar and mounted, so maybe it's just an illusion. But that also, the shorter handlebar may be what makes it feel so extra nimble. My bike is very nimble, but this feels uh, maybe just a slight bit more. Um, I was going through a curve on the way to work yesterday, and it's a long sweeping curve, and I'm, I'm kind of like maybe at like five degrees or something, maybe a little bit more, but I'm I'm going around it and I decide to pass somebody and I just kind of scooted around them in the other lane and, and I want to curve in, that, in the setup I was in. Um, it's, you know, it's not undoable by any stretch, but it did it, just, just did it flawlessly. And I was like, wow, I, I was a little shocked by the uh, nimble, nimbleness of it. Um, and I drive my bike every day, pretty much, to work. So I'm, I feel like I, I can drive my bike pretty well. I mean, I, I've never done a track day, so I'm not a track guy, I guess. I, I would love to be, but there's no track anywhere around me, so hours away, and just ain't got time for that. So, so I'm out riding the bike today. Today's Friday. Um, I gotta turn the bike in tonight. It's been a couple days of riding it. Um, quick thoughts. And I'll talk more about it in a second when I'm riding. Um, but the the ergos are different than my bike. I haven't decided whether they're good or bad, but they're different. So, um, yeah, just a little different. So we're going to get back on the bike here in a minute. I just had to stop and get me some ice mocha coffee at Dunkin'. Uh, it's hot as balls outside today so stay tuned we'll be back in a minute okay so i am uh i'm on the um street triple rs here the triumph and um it uh this bike just takes off fantastic um you know a little bit less torque than the uh duke but this is uh this is my bike and um i love it i think it's fast it um the handling is superb. The brakes are superb. The fit and finish on this bike is superb. I don't know. The only thing I think this bike should have came with that it didn't is, uh, well, I wish I had heated grips, but I can't say that it should have came with that.
but it definitely should have came with cruise control, which you can get on the um, Speed Triple, I believe. Uh, why this is not an option on this motorcycle, I don't understand. It has pretty much everything else available, um, but just um, it just handles like a dream, and um, it's just absolutely fantastic. I love, love, love this motorcycle. Uh, love it. So. Um, Stay tuned, we're gonna do some more driving around. Okay guys, I'm back on the uh, KTM Duke 890R. So we got a train here, and now I can't cross the road. So we're just gonna meander around, I think, for a minute. Wait for the train. I could go up there and try to beat the train, but I probably won't be able to in time. So I'm not gonna. I have no idea where I'm at. I think I used to know. My junior high is uh, up here. Well, sort of. I went here for a year. But, um, I don't. Oh, yeah. This is the ag department for the school. Um, that's what I thought I was at. But, uh, ooh, see, nimble. Spike's name is Jack. Jack be nimble. The lights are on. He's in the truck. That's why. Um, yep. Yeah. See, I'm going to take this turn. And, um, just, man, the torque. I tell you, I could just, I could just nail this thing all the time, and, and the torque just never, never gets old. Now, that said, I will say that the, the, um, the two-piston that are in here versus my three, it is a little bit rougher feeling motor. I mean... Not that that, not that it's rough. It's just rougher, you know. Um, a triple engine is going to be a lot smoother ride, um, or a lot smoother vibration, vibrationally, I guess. And then you got like your four cylinders that are like on Hondas and stuff, and um, they're even more. They're just like they just purr like a kitten. And um, so I feel that the triple sort of purr, but it's more like a roar from a lion, I guess. Um, and you got like Harleys that are just loud and they're just yelling like King Kong. But, um, but yeah, it rides good. It's fine. Um, you, you just can feel the, um, you can feel it sort of, I guess you could say in the, um, vibrations coming through the bike, but they're not bad. It's 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 not painful. It's not um, it's not a lot. I don't know what it would be like um, over time if it, if it gets to be a lot or not. But the bike handles it well. It's good dampening on there or whatever. However they got to mount it, you don't really. It's not bad. This is not a bad motorcycle. Um, I am nitpicking it for the purposes of this video, but it is 100% not a bad motorcycle. It's it's. It's quite nice, actually. Okay, let's head back over to the Triumph Street Triple RS for one last drive. Okay, so compared to the um, to the Duke, I think that the um, Street Triple is just a it's a more comfortable ride to me. Um, the pedals and the ergonomics are just a little bit better. I think the fit and finish of the bike is a little bit better. And for the price, I think you're getting more with the Triumph. And I'll go over that some more in a minute. But I do think the Duke is a, is a hell of a bike. It's 
really fun to ride, and there's just no doubt about it that it's fun to ride and it's a blast. So I don't think you can go wrong with it, but head to head, um, I think I'm, I'm leaning more towards um, my bike. And here we are, we're just about out the house, and we'll go over the specs now. Okay, guys, so I'm back from the ride, from a couple days of riding. It's been um, today's Friday. I picked it up uh, Wednesday at 6, drove it home in the dark. Got up, went to work in the dark, drove it home last night in the dark. So I got up this morning, and once once the fog in Central Florida that lasted forever wore off, I, I went for a few hours for a ride for a few hours. So I don't know. I put two three hundred miles on it, which isn't the best review in the world, I guess, for a bike. But um, it did give me a good indication of, of how this bike is, how the KTM Duke eight ninety R compares to the Triumph Street Triple RS. Um, the only difference is. Mine is a 20 and this is a 21, but my bike has not changed, um, has not changed in the last year. It's the same bike, the paint's a little different, some stickers are different, but other than that, same, same motorcycle. So let's go over some of the specs. So some of the specs for this, um, pretty obvious, whereas um, the, the KTM, it's a, it's a two-cylinder, um, obviously a parallel twin with eight valves. Uh, the Street Triple is a three-cylinder and has 12 valves. Um, basically, both producing the same amount of horsepower, 121. The only difference there is that KTM's only got two cylinders, but they're bigger cylinders, and it is 889 cc, whereas the Street Triple is um, 765 cc. So the Street Triple is able, able to produce the same horsepower that the that the KTM does with less with less uh, CC. So we're looking at um, 123 or something CCs less and the same horsepower. I mean, they both get up and go, but they are different in the fact that the KTM's just got a stupid amount of torque, um, really. You can really feel a difference uh, over the Street Triple. I think, other than that, I think that's where it ends. I think the two most important things that come away from this, one versus the other, the they both have the TFT display. Um, the Triumph is very good and so is the KTM. I think what's better is that the KTM does a better job of not putting crap where you can't find it, like the, the clock is the biggest gripe I think everyone's got. You can't, you can't hardly find a clock on the, on the Street Triple and when you're looking for it, you're, you're spending way too much time trying to find it. Um, on the KTM, it's there, it's easy to find. Um, mileage, it'll tell you how many miles are on the bike. The odometer is easy to find on the KTM, but on the, on the Street Triple, it's very difficult to find. So the KTM does a better job of, of not messing up the graphics on here. And from what I understand, the Speed Triple is, is much better too. I don't know why they don't upgrade this to the same version of the Speed Triple. For whatever reason, there's too much crap going on the screen. It's too hard to see, it's too small. Even, with, even if you have great eyesight, it's too hard to see. You don't want to be looking down at your dash. I think, to me, that's where the biggest differences are. Now, beyond that, um, the look of this is not a bad bike, but things I don't like about it is it's a lot of plastic. And the price difference in this is somewhere between five and I think $800. Okay, this, is, this, this retails for like, um, this particular model, the R, retails at $11,999, uh, right? So $12,000. Uh, my bike retail out the door for the RS model is twelve five, so that's a five hundred dollar difference. I think the the new ones might be a little bit more, but I don't think it's much. It's roughly the same. Um, so the difference there is with this, you're going for that extra money. I'm getting I'm getting controls. I'm getting turn signals that automatically shut off. You also have the quick lane change one where you just pop it and it blinks a couple times, lets people know, and you don't have to you don't have to turn it off. And when you make a turn, it turns off. This thing, I'm driving like like an old lady driving down the road with the turn signal going, and and just totally forget until I look down. So that was some getting used to. Um, other things, I got the quick shifter on the Triumph. Quick shifter up and down. I don't have to pay to have it put on. It comes with the bike. With the KTM, it's not coming with the bike. So those are two pretty big things that cost a bunch of money. The difference with this is, I've got a rubber band on here holding something down, so don't pay no attention, but, um, or it was helping the GoPro stay 
but with this, um, it did not come with the with the Bluetooth module. I thought it did, but it didn't. I had to do that. That cost me like three hundred dollars to have done between putting it on and having it turned on and all that. Um, but but the functionality is available on the KTM. I didn't see anything in there where the functionality was available. Maybe it is. I don't know, but I didn't see as much. There weren't. There wasn't as much to do here as there is to do here. Now, like I said earlier, sometimes that's a good thing because you can see what you need to find, but. The price differences, I don't, I don't see why the KTM cost almost as much. Um, a lot of plastic here, where there's, there's a little plastic on, on the Triumph, but there's a lot of plastic here. This looks like a supermoto bike, like a dirt bike type. This, it's not. I mean, you do get stuff. You get some adjustable forks. If you come over here, babe, you can see the adjustable forks. You got them on the Triumph. The Triumph comes with a little tool, or you use a screwdriver. Whereas the KTM, it's right there at your fingertips. You can do it pretty easy. Which is nice. That is a good. That's good. I like that. Um, these these look nice, but adjusting them, I have no way in hell to figure out how to do it. It. I guess you have to loosen this up and turn that. Well, they're tight as hell. And and it, other than this one that moved on me um, when I was going fast, um, I could not get these to turn without fear of breaking them. So they they look good. They're sturdy, but they're not very easily adjustable. But the rest of the bike, I mean, Brembo brakes, front and rear. You got Brembo master cylinder. You got you got adjustable adjustable um, um, controls here, just like just like the Triumph. I. But other than that, the plastic and the lack of some functionality. It's only got three riding modes versus the five. I think you're getting a better deal for the money with the Triumph. And I think if this was maybe one to two thousand dollars less, it would be on par. Um, it is a nice motorcycle. It is fun. It, it really handles fantastic. I think it almost, at times, I feel like it handles a little bit better than the Triumph. And I think maybe the reason is because maybe the engine's a little bit narrower. Center of mass is a little bit more centered. I'm not really sure why. There's, a, there's about a half degree difference in the rake. But it did feel like it wanted to dive into cor cor corners a little bit better. Um, they're both six speed. They both got the slipper clutch. Um, the frame on this is steel. Subframe's aluminum. The Triumph, I believe it's all aluminum, but I'm not completely sure. The I had said at the beginning of this that I thought that the KTM was lighter. I felt like it was 50 to 75 pounds lighter. I was wrong. They weigh exactly the same. They weigh 366 pounds dry. That's with no fuel, no battery, no coolant. They're the same. So um, I don't know why it felt lighter. I think it's just because it seems to be a little bit, it seems like it's a little bit taller bike. It seems like it's a little bit narrower in some fashion. And maybe the, the weight's up a little bit. I'm not really sure. I feel like the KTM's got a little bit more ground clearance. It may just be because I've got this, you know, because of the, um, whatever the fairing thing is there. Maybe that's it. I'm not sure. The suspension on this one, maybe it's just the way it's set up. It was a little bit more forgiving on the bumps than my Triumph. Probably has more to do with the way it's set up. All right, another thing to note that I, I felt like the pedals while I'm driving it, I felt like uh, they were just, they're just, they were, they're tucked in. They're tucked in and I had to kind of, when, when my boot's on there, my, and I'm, I'm pigeon-toed trying to reach them. Um, and I didn't, I wasn't happy about that. This one's, the shifter just seems really, really short to me like it should be a little bit longer um, when you compare them to the, like there you go there's a the street triple see how much that's hanging out and and this one just not hanging out the same I, I felt like I really had the work it, it hitting them the only other thing was and and also like my brake lever on the on the street triple it's the action is not there's not a lot there right the throw is just it's short where I was on this one Man, I, every time I hit it, I felt like my, my leg was, my foot was going way down. It felt spongy, but, but the brakes are fantastic. You, you, can't, you can't beat them. Brembo's are the best. So, the differences in, in, in ergonomics. This is another point that I think Triumph wins. Um, the ergonomics on this bike, I didn't think it was as good as it could have been. I mean, I spent a lot of time uh, up here with my, with my balls smashed um, trying to hold myself up and and if it had tank grips it would be a little bit better but it's also a lot more narrower so you almost have to like sit there with you it feels like your knees are trying to go together I just I could never really get comfortable trying to hold on to this bike 
Uh, a lot of times when I was turning quickly and taking off, like a quick, a quick cut and turn, um, I'm up on the tank and, and kind of driving it like it was a dirt bike. It's kind of how I felt. It feels very much like driving a dirt bike. It sounds a little bit like a dirt bike, drives like a dirt bike, um, it looks like a dirt bike. I, um, I, that's not a bad thing, but I think um, ergonomically, it's just not as comfortable. Um, some of it's probably I'm not used to it, but I did feel like my butt is hurting, my, my crotch is hurting, my wrists were hurting a little bit more because I don't have a good support here. Um, just it just not a good a good like I'm not sitting well so I'm putting a lot of pressure on my on my wrists and I couldn't really get comfortable this is more comfortable I don't that's how I feel but that is up to you know it's subjective I suppose but um, the seat feels like it should be it's, I mean the seat feels actually spongier than this one but it, it, I found it hurting I got on the bike and I rode it, it took me about 15 minutes probably to get down to uh, to get down to um, Dunkin Donuts and when I got off like 15 minutes we'll say 20 my butt hurt already in that amount of time I was like what the heck but 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 overall it's a very fun motorcycle to drive very fun and um, if you are an owner or if you're thinking about getting the KTM I, I don't think you can go wrong there um, I will say that I do th I just think it should be a little bit cheaper um, or maybe the Triumph should be more money. I, I'm not sure. It's, it's a very well-performing bike. I just think the ergonomics could be better, and I think the, the trim and the fit and finish could be a little bit better. But as far as riding it, it was super fun. I had a good time, and it, it just it made me giggle taking off. It was so fast. So anyway, guys, I really appreciate it. Leave your comments. Let me know how you guys, uh, what you think about it. And um, I'm interested to see what everybody has to say. Thanks for checking me out. Please check out my other videos. And hit like and subscribe down here below. And that's it. You guys take it easy and peace out. Okay, guys. One last word. I just want to give a quick shout out to Rider Share. Um, that's who I got the bike through. That is a, a um, an online um, resource where individuals run, rent their bikes. And um, I originally tried Twisted Road. And I had a hell of a time just getting through. I tried it on like three different browsers, two different computers, a phone. And finally, I, I went through the app, which was not easy. Had to do it a couple times before it finally went through. It goes through, and then they denied me for insurance. My insurance didn't meet it, even though I got their insurance. And I have insurance of my own, which is super expensive. Like, my insurance is like $1,400 um, a year for, the, for my Triumph, which did cover. I, I asked Progressive, and they said it did cover a rental bike. But they, they don't, neither one of these give you an option of not getting insurance. You have to get it. And I got the most expensive insurance with that. And it somehow kicked it back. I don't know. I think they're just screwed up. But Rider Share, I went over that, and the guy that I was looking, the bike I was looking at, the guy used both services. So um, it was easy. Went right through. You show up at the house uh, on the day that you that you say you want to rent it. You show up. You open up the app. You it has you take a picture, like go around, take a picture of this side, this side, this side, this side. Take a picture of the odometer with your next to your driver's license, and then it makes you take a selfie with your helmet on. Um, and any notes or any extra pictures you want to send in, anything about the bike, any conditions in, it's in or whatever. And um, the, the owner does the same thing. You both do the same thing so everything matches. And then when you come back, you do the same thing again, check over the bike, and away you go. The guy was super helpful. Um, just a nice guy. Just normal. It was nuts. It wasn't weird. It wasn't meeting weirdo on, on um, Craigslist kind of thing. It was very easy, very nice, and I, I had an excellent experience. So... You know, try it out. If you're not sure about the bike you want to buy or or you just want to try something new, it's a great way to do it without um, buying a bike and then hating it, right? So many people buy bikes and never ride them because they don't like it. So I think it's a fantastic idea. It was about, for two days, it cost about $193. It was a middle of the ground kind of expense. Some of them were cheaper and some of them were more expensive. Um, the longer you rent it, the, the cheaper it is for each day. But when you're down to like one or two days, I think at three days it gets cheaper, but, um, I didn't want it that long. So it was okay. Anyway, check them out, ridershare.com. Anyway, that's it guys. Thanks.